What's up guys? Welcome to Budget RC. Today you can see I've got my Gen 8 on the table and it's finally got some paint. This is going to be a quick video just to bring you up to speed with where I'm at on the truck. So stick around. Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We do all sorts of videos to help show you that you don't have to spend a lot of money to enjoy this hobby. This truck is a great example. It's under $300 and it's getting a really good reputation for being a really capable truck. If you saw my last video, you know that this came to me with a clear body. I knew right away that I wanted to follow a certain theme because there was a Scout online that I saw pictures of that I just really, really liked. It was white, it had a great restoration with a nice lift kit, nice wheels and tires, and I really liked how it looked. So I knew right away that I wanted to make this truck look just like it. Of course, the first part of that was the white paint job, but I also changed up the wheels on this one to help match that vehicle as well. So first I want to talk a little bit about the paint job. Overall, it was a pretty straightforward paint job. It's all plain white. But I did do the roof in this textured black paint to give it a more realistic look. And I wanted to kind of describe how I did that. It may be beneficial to you guys. Most of this effort was pretty standard. You clean the inside of the body, you put the window masks on, and I also masked off the roof area on the inside. I painted the rest of it with the white. Once I had that done, I took the masking off of the roof area and painted it with the black paint on the inside even though I knew I was going to be painting the outside. And I did that just in case I end up chipping this paint off of the outside. I didn't want that white to show through and look really bad. If this chips and comes off, it'll still be black underneath. Once I had the inside done, I turned my focus to the outside. The overspray mask on the outside of these Lexan bodies can be cut and used as a mask. And that's exactly what I had done. I cut it on the outside where I wanted to put this black paint on. Once I had that mask off, I scuffed it up with a Scotch-Brite pad just to give a little bit of extra adhesion. But before I put this truck bed liner paint on, I put on a couple coats of the same black paint that I used on the inside. Truck bed liner paint won't stick to Lexan. Pretty much nothing will except Lexan compatible paints. So I put a couple coats of that black paint down first. Once it tacked up, then I could put down a couple coats of this Duplicolor truck bed paint. The overall result looks great, it looks authentic, and it's durable. I've already taken a couple of tumbles with this truck on concrete, and there's no chips, just a couple of really small scratches up here. It's holding up really, really well, and I think it looks great. Moving on to the wheels and tires, I did upgrade my wheels to match that vehicle I was trying to replicate. This is just an inexpensive set of wheels that I picked up on eBay. I had my eye on them specifically because I liked the styling and they were very affordable. In terms of tires, I saw no reason to change the tires. I'm real happy with these tires on my Gen 7, so I wanted to continue to use them here on the Gen 8. Extreme close up! Whoa! However, I did want to change the foams, so while I had this apart, I took that opportunity. These trucks come with a memory style foam in the tires. And while it may work better in warmer climates, I'm in Vermont, it's the middle of winter, it's cold here. These things are as hard as a rock. You can see I've still got my spare tire here. And it's terrible. You can't use that. So what I did was get those out of there and went with some Crawler Innovation dual stage foams. These seem to be just about the most popular foam out there for crawlers. They work great. They're just the thing to go with. These are a dual stage foam with a really stiff foam in the middle to make sure that the tire can keep its shape and not roll over in corners. But a softer outer foam so that you still get the tire flex that you need to get over those obstacles. I went with a soft outer compound in the front and a medium compound in the rear. Although to be perfectly honest, I don't think I can feel a difference. Anyway, that's enough with the cosmetics now. I want to show you the one change that I did make to this vehicle, and that was to get rid of the Velcro mounting system. Since I got this truck, one of the four Velcro pads just would not stick to the underside of the body. It came off every time. I put new Velcro on and it came off too. I think the problem in my case was that there was just too much mold release still stuck to the plastic, and that was causing the Velcro not to stick. 
If I cleaned it before I put the new Velcro on, I might have had better luck. But I knew I was going to go with a magnet mount system anyway, so I really didn't put a lot of effort in. So what I want to do is give you a quick rundown of how I did my magnets. If you look, you can see I've got the four magnets mounted to the underside of the body. And this was the part that I had done first. I cleaned the underside of the body really well to get rid of all that mold release. And then I used a little bit of shoe goo to hold the magnets right into the indentation that's made for them. These are 20 millimeter by three millimeter magnets and they're a perfect fit in those indentations. I went ahead and glued these in, let it sit overnight to make sure that they were good and firm. Then I got another set of magnets and stuck them directly to these. Once I had shoe goo on those, I set the body down and I took the chassis and dropped it right on top. And that provided some weight pushing down on those magnets while these cured. And overall, I'm real happy with how it came out. The body goes into exactly the right spot every time and it's good and sturdy. Give it a good yank and they come right off. Put it back, it's in the right place every time. It's such a piece of cake. These should be strong enough that this body ought to withstand pretty much everything except the most severe rollovers. But if I do want some more holding strength, I can add four more magnets and double the amount of strength I have holding this body on. So far, that's pretty much all I've done to this vehicle. I finally had a chance to run it and I had a blast. Now that I've had a chance to use the vehicle, I have to say that I'm really impressed with it. Right off the bat when I got my Gen 7, I knew I was going to have a whole lot of upgrades to do. It was a good vehicle for the money, but it definitely had some shortcomings. To be perfectly honest, this vehicle doesn't have nearly the same amount of shortcomings. If you follow the forums and the Facebook groups, you hear a lot of chatter about things like bump steer because of the front steering geometry and the hump in the middle of the skid plate that things are getting hung up on. And those are all legitimate concerns, but I really think that they may be overblown. Now in the terrain I've been running, the skid plate really wasn't something that I could have tested. I need to wait for the snow to melt, get this on some real rocks to see if that's a problem. But in terms of the bump steer, to be perfectly honest, it's so minor that it's just not an issue. If I push down and completely collapse this suspension, I'm not even sure if you can see it on camera, but these front tires turn just a little bit. It's almost unnoticeable. Now, if I was going 50 miles an hour with this thing on pavement and I hit a big bump, maybe there'd be some bump steer. But at crawling speeds and with the amount of actual suspension articulation you're getting on the trails, it just doesn't translate into a problem. But there still are some cheap, easy ways to go ahead and rectify that. I've seen some guys do it in a few different ways, including different servo arms. And Steve from Shen RC, who just trimmed down the stock servo arm and had a noticeable improvement. I'll link to his video below if you wanted to go ahead and give that a try. When I upgrade my servo, I'll probably try to attack it too. But to be perfectly honest, I'm even happy with the stock servo right now. Now again, I've only had it in snow. Once I get it on rocks and start really trying to test that servo, I may feel differently. I know that the servo in my Gen 7 didn't last for very long, so I'm not really expecting this one to last forever either. I will end up upgrading it eventually, and when I do, I'll try to address the bump steer as well, but it's just too minor of an issue for me to get hung up over it now. Overall, I'm really happy with this truck, and I'm just looking forward to driving it some more. When I do, I'm hoping to get some video of it. If you guys are interested in seeing some running footage, make sure you subscribe so you'll see it when I post it. Other than that, guys, that's pretty much it on this one. Uh, this was just a quick update, kind of show you where we're at. I've got some minor changes that I may make along the way, but right now I just want to drive it. And I hope you guys get out and drive your vehicles too. The weather's starting to warm up, it's starting to get nice, and I can't wait for the snow to melt so I can hit the trails. So anyway, guys, that's it for this one. Thanks a lot.